Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we start our topic for today, let me ask you one question. What do you guys think is this equipment? Well, it's an impeller for a damp turbine engine. An impeller is basically a rotor whose function is to increase the pressure and flow of a fluid. Now, are you wondering why we are talking about impellers? Our topic for this session isn't impellers, is it? Well, it's because impellers are manufactured using ceramic mold casting. In this session, we'll talk about the process of ceramic mold casting, its advantages, disadvantages and applications. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Ceramic mold casting along with plaster mold casting and investment casting processes are known as precision casting methods. Why, you might wonder? Well, this is because final castings with high dimensional accuracy and excellent surface finish are obtained. Among the three casting processes that we mentioned, plaster mold and ceramic mold casting are almost the same. The only difference is that plastic mold casting employs plaster of Paris as the molding material, while ceramic mold casting utilizes refractory materials like zircon as the molding material. We have covered investment casting in another video. If you haven't checked it, the links are in the description below. Now let's get back to our topic. In ceramic mold casting, the pattern may be made of wood or metal. A ceramic slurry is then poured over the pattern. This slurry is prepared by mixing fine-grained refractory powders like zircon with aluminum oxide and fused silica. This mixture is then mixed with a binding agent and poured over the pattern. As a result of the slurry, a thin refractory coating is made over the pattern. This coating is the ceramic mold which is used for further process. Usually, it takes a maximum of 15 minutes for the formation of this coating. The ceramic mold is then removed from the pattern and dried. It is then ignited at high temperatures to burn off the volatile materials left in the pattern. Finally, it is baked in fire clay so that the mold achieves enough strength for handling the molten material. Now, the mold is preheated to about 120 degrees Celsius. The molten metal is poured into the mold cavity. This molten metal is then allowed to cool down and solidify and hence the final casting is obtained. For complex parts, several ceramic faces are manufactured and then assembled into a single ceramic mold in which the molten metal is poured. Since the refractory molding materials have very good resistance to high temperatures, ceramic mold casting can be used for manufacturing ferrous and other high temperature alloys. Various parts such as impellers, cutters for machining operations, dies for metal working and molds for making plastic and rubber components can be manufactured using ceramic mold casting. We know the process and applications of ceramic mold casting. Now, let's discuss its advantages and disadvantages. Using ceramic mold casting, parts with thin sections, excellent surface finish and high dimensional accuracy can be produced. Manufacturing tolerances ranging from 0.002 to 0.01 inches can be obtained. As a result, there is little need for machining, which makes this casting process very efficient for casting precious metals. Ceramic molds are resistant to high temperature, due to which ferrous and high temperature alloys can be manufactured using ceramic mold casting. Now, what are the disadvantages of ceramic mold casting? Well, this process is considered highly expensive and slow due to the long preparation time of the mold. Now, it's time for us to conclude the session. Today, we talked about the process of ceramic mold casting, its advantages, disadvantages and applications. We'll cover more topics on casting processes in our upcoming videos. Until then, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.